Yeah, training's been competitive uh, almost from uh, day one, really. So today was a, you know, it was a good 20, just over 20 minute session of uh, competitive work, and you know, the boys looked uh, looked good. How's that Taylor Walker going? He looked a bit fired up out there. Yeah, well, the forwards are always keen to get a touch during the uh, during training, but no, Tex has been his training's been uh, been very good, and um, uh, you know, being that target up forward. Particularly during training, he was he was good. He had a couple of nice touches, and you know, they're all screaming for the ball when they're in the forward line. So no, he was uh, he was quite good today. Some really good really good touches, confidence touches, which is good. So what, what are you doing with um, Taylor? Obviously, his history of a bit of aggro. He's trying to bottle that a bit, or are you happy to see him doing that? Oh, I think players play on instinct. So the uh, the more they can play on instincts, uh, the better they're going to perform. So if you try and curb someone's natural instincts, I think you're. Uh, you're almost blunting what they can do in the game. So go and play the game and uh, see it as you uh, as you would at training today, and I'm sure you'll take that in the games. Dean, can you just explain what the you've obviously come to Adelaide? What is the actual new role? What are you what have you been sort of assigned to do? Uh, well, I think it's more along the lines of um, you know obviously with a new coach uh, and uh, and Santa's been outstanding with his uh, with his delivery, his message, but certainly following that up as well. It's also assisting with um, game plan and game design and training with, uh, with the other coaches. Uh, part of my role certainly will be in the, in the uh, innovations part of it. We've got a really good connection with Friends University at the moment, which we're really going to expand on. Um, so it, it's broad in its um, demands, and uh, which is great. We've done a lot of forward scouting, going to watch opposition, upcoming opposition games as well. So um, the busier I am, the happier I am, Tom. So um, everything that I've been asked to do, I, uh, I do as well as I can, and uh, then try and produce a little bit more. So certainly assisting Sando, certainly assisting other coaches as well, but certainly challenging them on what they do as well. I think it's important. So that even though we're uh, we're right into the pre-season, you know, not long to go, everything still needs to be, you know, you know the detail and uh, the examination's got to be thorough. So we're uh, part of my role is making sure that, that gets done as well. You've obviously been a senior coach. How hands-on has Sando let you be with your ideas, your thoughts, you know, game plan, as you say, all that stuff? Oh, no, Sando, Sando's come in with a, with, with a clear way he wants to play. I mean, it's, it's assisting him in rolling out what he wants. I mean, he's put his stamp on the, on the, uh, on the team and the club very early. And um, there aren't too many uh, players or coaches who don't understand what he wants. He's been, he's been very thorough and very detailed, and he's been very, very impressive. Very, very impressive. And the players are uh, they're feeding off his energy and his vibe, but um, he's been terrific. Given all your experience, what can we learn from you? Probably things I didn't do well, to be honest. Um, you know, sometimes you you, uh, you go through a patch where there are things that you, you would have liked to have had as a senior coach, and you can pass those experiences on to him as well. But, you know, he's, he's been in a very good program down at Geelong. Um, and uh, although he's brought some ideas from Geelong with him, he's been very specific on what he wants. You know, he's certainly put his own stamp on it as well. Um, probably more the detail stuff, more the uh, you know planning ahead. You know, I mean, when you start as a senior coach, you are into it 24/7, and you generally can get caught up in the day-to-day -day running of it. And, you know, the, that planning, the two, four, six weeks out, has been really important for him. So, everything he's asked me to do, you know, I'm, I'm certainly happy to help. And there are some ideas that I've thrown at him, but at the end of the day, he's he's making the decisions. He's the one determining what we do, and um, he's been very thorough, very thorough. How does this footy department compare with others? Uh, well, I've only been at one other club. I've been at Port Adelaide for six years. I was at Essendon for two years, and uh, the, the football develop, uh, the, the football department, football clubs develop, and they actually look for new structures, new strategies, but they also look for new uh, structures in the sense of, you know, we've got uh, more development coaches now. I mean, uh, Tricky's been very, very strong, and Sander has as well about getting a number of coaches involved from a development point of view, making sure you've got five or six players for one coach, and that helps the teaching and the education of the players. And, um, yeah, that's been developing. Ten years ago, that wasn't that wasn't there. Um, so you're always looking. You're trying to, you know, get ahead of the curve. And um, I think this club certainly uh, at that point now. What was the reason um, for coming to the Crows, a new club, as opposed to I know Port was keen to get you back. What, what was uh, what swayed oh, your decision there? Well, I came to a club that uh, I spoke when I was at uh, at Melbourne. I spoke to Sam about coming across to Melbourne. Uh, when he went for the Geelong job, and uh, he returned the favour, so well, I've known him for a while. But, so uh, it's it's a very good club, it's a well-run club, and uh, it's well-resourced, and I'm very very happy to be here. And I'm really excited about what these young players are going to produce. Then you said you you would maybe say to Sando, learn from some of the things I didn't do. Well, what did you feel with some of those might be that he could prepare himself for? That? This is a five-minute. <laughs> oh. I think the experiences that, uh, that you have in um, making sure that you know, your time efficient is probably the key, I think. I mean, you can get 
caught up with a lot of things and you want to be able to get involved in everything you can. But, um, he's been very direct in, uh, in, in his time. He's been very efficient at what he's been doing. Football's an absolute focus for him. He lives and breathes it, so you know, that's a fantastic attitude to have. So, I mean, there are, there are other things along the way that hopefully I can sort of um, preempt before they, before they happen for him. But um, uh, there's only one boss and he's done a pretty good job. And I know you're not there anymore, but Jim no, Stubbs, obviously, there anymore. he stepped down. You're obviously yeah, tough yeah. for him with illness and everything. Yeah, look, Jimmy's a fantastic bloke. He's, he's brought a lot to the, to the club. Um, as a person, you know, he's, um, you know, he's right up there. You know, you, you talk about icons of the, of the game at Melbourne. You know, he's, he's been a fantastic ambassador for the game. Uh, outstanding person, you know, uh, quality person to have met. So, you know, I wish him all the best always. Have. So uh, hopefully he can... He can uh, survive. He's survived. He's out. He's outdone all the numbers. He just keeps proving them, uh, proving them wrong. So you know, fingers crossed, he keeps going. He's a terrific bloke. He's got a fantastic family. So although he stood down, you know, he's he's going to be hard to keep away, Jimmy, from the club. He, he loves it. So well, you know, I hope things go well for him. Russian, um, what sort of a loss is he to the club, and how long is he going to be out for? Oh, I think um, I think the big unit will be back on a bike in a week, I think, and then uh, walk and jog on after that. So. I know he's, um, he's been in the situation before in the sense of he's a very experienced player, he's got a lot of training age behind him, so you know, he'll be a couple of weeks before he starts jogging and running again and we expect him to be uh, up and going probably two or three weeks from a, from a physical running point, jogging point of view. You know, there's a lot of cross training you do, there's a lot of ways of staying fit nowadays, so even though he won't be on his legs, he'll be... Um, He'll be working hard in the gym, he'll be working hard off his feet, so he's, uh, he's only a loss if he's not playing, but at the moment he's getting a, 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 an operation that'll uh, get him back probably in better condition than probably what, what if he didn't have one. So. Is it a tricky injury to come back from? Uh, no, I think Chris Knights and, um, uh, came back fairly early, I think, Knighter, so um, no, there's proof in the pudding, the, the, the uh, medical guys who've been through it before, so he's in very good hands. Is he chance for round one? Oh, I wouldn't see why not. I mean, yeah, what today with the second of Feb, we're a while away, so it's a long time until round one. So, and he's a professional leader, so I'm sure he'll be uh, he'll be around the mark, no doubt. Just looking towards the NAB Cup, what are you what are your goals for that? What are you looking to get out of it for the team? Oh, I think our, our players. I mean, you do you have a big pre-season, and what you want to be able to do is eventually start playing games against opposition. So. Um, the boys have been very competitive. I mean, even though I was only 20 minutes today, we've done that session, we've done that competitive work for a long time now. So um, they're going to be game ready from a competitive point of view, and that's what that's what uh, Sando will expect them to be. We'll expect them to be harder and tougher around the contest, and we're doing our training, so now we should replicate it in games. So I think that's going to be a focus for us. Will you be trialling a few key defenders or any any particular roles or anything? Uh, yeah, I still think that's in the uh, from a uh, from an outward point of view. Yet yeah, we're still working on it, but inwardly, guys have been um, moved around in some positions. I think that's fair for, for a new coach to come in and you know see what guys might be able to do in a couple of different positions. So you know, we've certainly been doing that in our development classes. We've been going through, we've been going through training with them in the division. So they're going to be well prepared if they do pop up in a different spot. Thanks, Dan. 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 Thanks,